we're getting the first sounds uh, from Mars from, from, from our instrument. And uh, we went back, kind of, uh, you know, looked at the whole system. We're realizing it's picking up vibrations uh, from the, the atmosphere, from the air, that are then, you know, sort of being uh, uh, transferred from the spacecraft to our instrument. So the sound comes in, which are, you know, pressure variations. They vibrate these big solar panels on the spacecraft and other components as well. Those vibrations then are picked up by the seismometer as it's a, a vibration sensor and turned into, you know, electrical signals, electrical impulses that we can then send to Earth and then put back through a system, an amplification system, into a speaker, which is another big diaphragm, actually. That speaker then, you know, moves back and forth and recreates the pressure, uh, the pressure pulses, the pressure waves that are, uh, that we're sensing on Mars. Turns out if, if, uh, if you took an elephant to Mars, it would be able to hear the, the sounds that we're, we're picking up on our pressure sensors. So we can actually measure um, very, very deep sounds. These are sort of below the base you know, range of, of, of our hearing. And we can uh, uh, raise the frequency of those sounds so that we can hear um, what, what those sounds would sound like if we had elephant ears. We checked out our micro seismometers and when we saw or when we rather heard what we had recorded we realized that we were in fact listening to the first recording of the vibrations of Mars the sound being picked up by the solar arrays and transmitted through the spacecraft to our sensors As the wind is blowing over the arrays, it does excite the uh, vibrations of the spacecraft. And as we're mounted to the spacecraft, that is what we pick up. It's really quite a similar way as to how we hear sound. So our ear works by the sound being um, picked up by the, uh, by the eardrum. And as the eardrum vibrates, that motion of the eardrum is transmitted through the inner ear through the middle ear to the uh, cochlea and that transmits the electrical signals from that vibration to the brain. Sound itself is um, oscillations in the pressure, variations in the pressure of the air between you and me. So my voice is, is shaking the air and making little compression waves and they propagate out and they hit your ear and you perceive that as sound. Um, that can happen over a wide range of frequencies. Our human ears respond to something like 20 or 30 hertz, 20 or 30 oscillations per second, up to something like 15,000 to 20,000 oscillations per second. Um, our sensor only records up to 20 hertz, 20 oscillations per second. So it's just below where you can hear with human ears. When we do robotic exploration, usually we, uh, we, we see pictures first and, and we experience what it's like to be on another planet visually, primarily. And that makes sense because we're visual people. Um, but at the same time, when we go to a new environment on Earth, part of our experience is listening for what we hear. Go up in the mountains and the sound is different than when you're on a busy street corner. So this is great because we're now on Mars and we can actually listen to what it looks what it sounds like when you're sitting there on Mars on a on a on a warm sunny afternoon and you're hearing the wind buffet come by your ears and you hear it uh, whistle in your ears a little bit and then it's calm a few seconds later and you don't hear that sound and that's what we're hearing on Mars <laughs>